Hey guys, David McCabe, Transformation Specialist at Transform Fitness here, coming to you from my home because we are snowed in, thanks to uh, the beast from the east, beast from the northeast. Anyway, um, first off, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for uh, watching the video. If you haven't watched the video, go to YouTube, look up Transform Fitness and look up Nutrition for Beginners. Right, today I'm going to talk about something that is, is hard for me to talk about, but I am going to talk about from my own experience. So take it as my opinions and my opinion on the matter. And I am no way a psychologist. I'm just putting that out there just in case I get a, a few other messages that I don't really want. But I am going to talk about bullying and body shaming. So bullying and body shaming. Why is this relevant as a fitness poster video? Because it's relevant to me. And it's what led me down this path. I'm gonna tell you in due time why it led me down this path. But it's becoming more relevant. It's happening all the time around us. You can't put up a post, you can't put up a video, you can't put up anything in this day and age because we're so social media driven without a negative comment beside it or a teary face or a sad face you can't win because there's always going to be something out there that no one's going to like regardless if you're doing good or bad i mean it's just the facts but like it, it it's it's so sad to see that it's still running and i would really Love to see it stop, but it's never going to go away. Never. Never. Like, sociologists have been studying this for decades. They don't call it, obviously, bullying. They call it dominance behavior. And basically, it's, it means that, obviously, one person wants dominance over the other. Simple. That is just it. And where it comes from is more than likely insecurity on the bully's behalf. You know, and I could say that and, you know, pretend to be... Uh, an American philosopher saying it's it's all about their insecurities, but it you know it more than likely is like from the age of eight or nine, you know, I didn't know what the hell it was. Um, I was always taller than other people. I was on inhalers and creams from a young age, so I was always on inhalers from as long as I can remember. I can be I remember being on inhalers and 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 and, and um, Betnovate from my skin, from my eczema. And, you know, all this stuff obviously takes its toll, but, like, I don't remember the reasons why it started. I don't have a clue. And it, it's not years later I understand that it wasn't my fault. It's not like I was bullying people. I, I don't bully people. Like, there was nothing, there was nothing that I would, would have really got behind. You know, I was quite content doing what I was doing. Playing with my friends, going to school. But after a while, I hated school. I was crying going to school. Didn't want to go to school because I didn't want to see a group of people. This is national school. And it got to the stage where every age that I was, I was that weight or more. And by the time I was 16, I was nearly 19 stone. You can ask my family or friends. It, it plays a lot on people. And it, it's not going away anytime soon. You know, and th there's a couple of things that I, I, I still have ringing in my head. Like three in particular. And it's never going to go away. You know, it, but what happens is, is that it makes you stronger. I think it does. It took me a while to get the strength from it. But it does make you stronger. And there recently, uh, a year or two ago, Someone decided to put up something about me, me, uh, on a for sale page. I'm not going to mention who the hell it was, because they don't need and nor do they deserve my attention. But he had no right to do that. He had no right at all. I didn't go near him. I didn't talk about him. I don't talk about anyone. If you see me in a gym, my earphones are in and I'm doing a job. Unless a friend of mine is there. Even at that, you can even ask them, Jesus, David was awful quiet there today, training. I have a job to do. 
When I go in, I train, I go home. That's it, if I'm not into training, you'll see me talking. Very rare, very rare, enough training. I'm gonna tell you something. It is very personal to me. If I break down, I'm very sorry. Uh, I was in college in Limerick with a mate of mine, still good friends, you know who you are. And, you know, I thought the further away from my home place, I'd be better. You know, no one would know me, it'd be fresh start. And I was, you know, 18, 19 stone, 17 years of age. Wow. It's great in school. First year was fantastic, but didn't stop. So, in the summer of 2004, I didn't work. I asked my father, could I work for him, basically, God rest him, um, cleaning buses, doing odd jobs around the house, painting, whatever. Every day I'd ask him for something. I think I annoyed him so much asking him because I felt so bad. You know, but I had a job too, and he understood that, which was great. And I did lose over eight stone in three and a bit months. I had two physical shutdowns, a couple of mental ones. And the good mate of mine, um, I remember we were singing because I was on such a low calorie diet at the time. We were singing lyrics, and he sang the lyrics wrong. And I was so low that we had an argument over the lyrics, and I pinned them against the wardrobe. Ah, oh, Jesus. And then I went back to college and people really didn't know who I was. But it still didn't stop. It still didn't stop. So I left. And by God did I feel shitty. After all that work, it still didn't stop. Wow. I felt so bad. I thought I left my family down. Most of all, I thought I left my father down. A um, couple of months later, obviously, um, we're into 2005, somewhere, right? And it came to Father's Day. And if you ask anybody that, that's around me, especially Claire, um, I always write essays in, in cards. So for Father's Day, I wrote a nice note for my father that I was very proud to be his son. And when people ask me if I am Peter McCabe's son, still to this day, I'm very proud of that. Very proud of that. He was a great man. Uh, sorry. Um, but the man came into my room. And he started crying. Because he said he was proud of me. For what I'd done. Losing all my weight. Doing it against everybody. Trying to make things better for myself. I didn't know what to say to him. But he was bawling on my bed. And, uh, that was it. That was it. It was done. A year after that, he was gone. A year and a bit. He passed away. My mentor. My father. My friend. Gone. And you think, now you think, if you've anything bad to say about me, you think that your words bother me sadly fucking mistaken. 
There is nothing worse than that. So if you actually think that your words are going to hurt me in any way, shape or form, you are sadly mistaken. But, on another note, some people don't have that. And I do like to stand up for people. I do like standing up. I don't like standing for this body shaming, bullying stuff. So there's always to stay, um, there's always a will to be resilient. If someone starts at you, listen verbally, I'm not talking about physically. If someone attacks you physically, you, you, you that, that's a crime. Um, you should stand up for yourself. But I mean verbally. Don't give them fuel. Don't. I did many of the times where I've 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 seen that guy who put up that post and anger does take over, of course. Well, you're just fueling that. Can you imagine the big guy that took down the small guy? Doesn't sound good. Sounds weak. And one thing I am not is weak. So anyone watching this video, when it comes to body and body shaming, it's 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 gonna be there. I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna stop, because it may not. But uh, one thing I will say is that you always have a great response uh, in your own head, which is fuck you. My happiness is not determined on what you think of me. It's what I think of myself. That's what my loved ones think of me. Not you. You're not in my universe. You're nothing to do with me. So when I turn around, you don't exist. But you say your words. Post them anywhere you want. Make a video about them. Because I can tell you one damn thing. I will not care. And anyone watching this, you shouldn't care either. Because they're going to pick on someone else. As my father used to say, if they're picking on you, they're leaving someone else alone. And vice versa. If they're picking on, if they're not picking on you, they're picking on someone else. It's never ending. It doesn't stop. But be resilient. If they say they hate you, just say, okay, cool. You've an ugly face. I know, yeah, yeah. Not much I can do about that. You know, these are the gifts I was given. You know, don't fuel them. If someone calls you ugly and you go, shove it. Ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna work. Um, just be resilient and be true to yourself. I think I've talked long enough about that. So leave your comments below if you want to hit another topic. Um, also give it a like. Try and subscribe to YouTube. Uh, follow us on Facebook. And you can get us on Snapchat as well. And Instagram, which is great. Um, also I'm going to attach to this is uh, Storm Emma's or Bees from the East home workout. Um, because some people just can't leave the house. Like myself. So, I'm going to sign out now. I hope you've found something in this video. And, uh, I'll get talking to you soon. Bye now.